In the early winter of 2022, I posted a video to this channel in response to the announcement that WotC would be releasing a 50th anniversary new edition of Dungeons & Dragons. They claimed that this new edition would be backwards compatible, that it wasn't really a new edition, just the same old 5e but changed a little bit, and we were invited to think that the new edition was on analogy with, say, updates to Mac OS X. In the same way that the current Mac OS went from Lion to Tiger and eventually exhausted all of the predatory jungle cats and moved on to mountain ranges like Sierra, but it stayed the same sort of OS underneath with just little tiny changes, so were we invited to think of D&D 5.5, or whatever it's going to be known as, as being little changes to the 5th edition that we all already know and love. Now, in my video, what I predicted was that D&D would become a modular rule set, or that we would have a modular rule set for 5e. We are going to get modular core rules. Here's what that means. After 2024, groups will be able to choose a setting or a mode for their D&D rules. Each setting or mode will be a variation on core rule set. In other words, the basic rules of 5e would come with various ways of playing them, different versions of playing them, some of which are more gritty, some of which are more violent, some of which are more bloody, and some of which accommodate certain settings. Like, imagine a version of 5e where all of these spells were actually psionic powers, and some of them were eliminated, others were added, and many are reset skinned to that end. I thought there would be many different versions of D&D 5e and that that was going to be a major change in 2024. Now, I was not only personally surprised, but <laughs> ridiculed online for this opinion when WotC announced the very opposite of a modular rule set. Instead of a plurality of rules, many different rules, we got the announcement for one D&D. &D. Literally one D&D. &D. It's in the name. The name itself says we're not doing many D&D, &D, we're doing one. And so it seemed that I was proven wrong. It seemed that way until January of 2023, when something happened. That's right, the OGL crisis happened. That event in which WotC made a corporate bid to restrict and isolate their brand and make sure that nobody else would profit from it, sent the rest of their fandom and the rest of the market into a tizzy? Not sure what else to call it. Everybody said, hey, you know what? I'm going to make my own version of 5e. I'm going to make it with different things and slight variations, and I'm going to sell it, and it's going to do better than WotC because none of us like WotC. And there was good reason to do this. So what happened as a result is that I was right. We did end up with a bunch of different versions of 5e. I assumed we were going to end up with different versions of 5e because that's just where the game was headed. So many people had different homebrews and different ways of playing and different styles that consisted in restricting this or that, that it would only be natural for a business to try to capitalize on that and profit from it from accommodating it and incorporating it. Saying, oh yeah, do you like to play with this rule instead of that one? We have a version listed in our player's handbook. I thought that's what they were going to do. WotC didn't do that. But the rest of the community that likes 5e did. And now we have over a dozen different versions of 5e that you can play. I was wrong to think that WotC themselves would provide modularity to 5e, but I was right to think that modularity was coming, and here it is. So in this video, which is something of a little victory dance for me, I'm going to talk about just a few of the many, many, many versions of 5e that you can play. And I imagine that the number of versions of 5e that you can play in the future are only going to increase. So by the time you watch this video, there might already be dozens of versions of 5e, and we're all enjoying them in various different ways. So here we go. Now I divide all of these different versions of 5e into basically three different groups. The first group is what I call the tune-ups. You know, like how you take your car for a tune-up. These are versions of 5e's core rules where they don't change too much, they just make little adjustments to make the overall system work better, and sometimes to stylize it in a very subtle way. These include Tales from the Valiant, Level Up Advanced 5e, G7 D20, 
and a weird little homebrew called Darker Dungeons. All of these systems are basically 5e, but they have subtle differences when it comes to things like inspiration, proficiency bonus, armor class, and other minutia of the 5e system. Darker Dungeons in particular seems to have this ambition to include every other cool mechanic from every other RPG that they can find. G7D20 has its genesis in efforts to adapt Lord of the Rings to a 5e rule set. And Level Up Advanced 5e and Tales from the Valiant seem to be just doing some really rigorous New York-style copy editing on the rule sets for 5e since 2014. Tales of the Valiant notably has a luck system that replaces the initiative system, and Sly Flourish has talked a lot about that favorably. I would check out his videos on that, especially from the last couple of weeks. And Level Up Advanced 5e is actually a veteran here. It's been around for a while, and a lot of people enjoy it. After the tune-ups, we have the Osrish Hordes, or the OSR-ish Hordes. These are games that take 5e's rule set and restrict it and simplify it and reduce it so that it becomes something that's a little bit more similar to what we would call the OSR, or the Old School Renaissance. These are versions of 5e that tend to be simpler, easier to play, have a character creation process that takes minutes, like less than 10 minutes, and which challenge the player and the player's mind and wits rather than challenging their character sheet. The two prominent members of the Osrish Hordes, of course, are Shadow Dark and Five Torches Deep. These are two different versions of the 5e rule set that make everything a lot more simple and a lot more lethal. In both of these systems, torchlight matters. Nobody's walking around with super ultra awesome devil's sight dark vision anymore. You need to use torches. Also, in these systems, treasure matters. And there are no such things as spell slots. Instead, you're making checks to see if you can cast a certain spell. These versions of 5e have a lot that feels like the video game Darkest Dungeon. So if you're into that sort of experience and you like 5e, maybe check out Shadow Dark and Five Torches Deep. Now, after the tune-ups and the Osrish Hordes, there is the last and largest category, which I call the Renovators. These are versions of 5e which have not only made adjustments to the rules, but which have entirely reskinned, recast, and reinterpreted everything from classes and class abilities to spells and monsters. The Renovators keep the core of the 5e rule set, but they make the whole game about something else. Something other than the game's stated fantasy in its implied setting. First, we've got the Lost Citadel from Green Ronin Press. This is a version of the 5e rule set which reinterprets all of the classes, most of the magic, and the setting and the monsters, so that you're living in a medieval zombie apocalypse. This medieval zombie apocalypse is a low fantasy setting, in the sense that magic is very rare, doesn't do a whole lot, and is very scary when you do anything with it. And this version of 5e also has a kind of alignment emphasis on class, so that you can only be a paladin if you're, like, lawful good, I think, and you can only be a warlock if you're evil. It's a neat little system, and a lot of work went into it, but I have some very, very serious critiques of the way that they handled races in their book. I won't go into it here, but I would just say there's some room for improvement. There's also, of course, Doctors and Daleks, and alongside it, I would put Star Wars 5e. These are two different versions of the 5e core rule set, which reconstrue the classes, class abilities, and other features that are accessible to PCs as elements of a beloved sci-fi franchise. As you might expect, Doctors and Daleks is sort of a Doctor Who-ified version of 5e, and Star Wars 5e is, well, Star Wars for 5e. You've also got Gene Funk 2090. This is sort of a cyberpunk version of 5e. You can play 5e, but sort of in a cyberpunk setting and with cyberpunk characters, and it's all, you know, Shadowrun Scotty sprinters, but without the uh, actual rule set. You get to use 5e's rule set instead. Then you've got Magi Knights, or Magi Knights, or Magi Knights. It's sort of an animeified version of 5e where the rules and the rule set have been adjusted as well as character options have been adjusted to facilitate the kind of action and storytelling that you would expect in an anime show or in an anime movie. Which is different from Esper Genesis, a version of the 5e rule set that tells more 
classic sci-fi stories. Ones where the sci-fi does not place emphasis on either cyberpunk, late capitalist desperation, or in anime aesthetics. It's much more like, I don't know, Starfinder or something, but if you had it for 5e. And finally, last and weirdest, but most adorable, is Pugmire. Pugmire is a version of 5e where you play as adorable animals. It's also a reskin and a retooling of the 5e rule set, one which places emphasis on changing all of the player accessible options so that it's more, well, animalified. Now, that's already over a dozen different rule sets for 5e, or a dozen different versions of 5e. Tales from the Valiant, Level Up, Advanced 5e, G7, D20, Darker Dungeons, Shadow Dark, Five Torches Deep, Lost Citadel, Doctors and Daleks, Star Wars 5e, Gene Funk 2090, Magi Knight, Esper Genesis, and Pugmire. That's 13 different versions of 5e that are all out there that people play and enjoy. So much for one D&D, huh? Seems like somebody... Somebody who made a video in the winter of 2022 who said we're gonna have a bunch of different versions of 5e was right. Or do you disagree? Let me know in the comments. Did I leave some versions of 5e out that you really love or think should have been mentioned? Do you disagree with me over the obvious fact that we have many different versions of 5e coming? Do you think that the playing of 5e is going to reach an apex and then decline as people get interested in other systems? Let me know in the comments. I've got more Ravenloft content and other content coming out for you soon. In the meantime, thank you very much. And finally and lastly, if you love anything I've ever done on this channel, if you like my videos at all, if you want to support the channel in any way whatsoever, please, please back my project on Kickstarter, an original TTRPG that has been lovingly crafted over the course of 20 months in tribute to the writer Robert W. Chambers and his work The King in Yellow. Five Acts The King in Yellow is an original TTRPG that features narrative storytelling mechanics. It's very spooky. It's lovingly written by myself, illustrated by very talented artists Mel Williams and Sam Fontaine, and it needs your help. I do not have a Patreon. This channel's videos are not monetized. I've never really asked for money ever on this channel in any of my videos. But if you want to support what I do, if you want to help this channel keep going, please check out Five Acts The King in Yellow. You can get to it either by going to Kickstarter and looking for King in Yellow stuff, or you can go to our website, nilhemoth.com, N-I-L-H-E-M-O-T-H.com. Take a look. Watch the spooky trailer I made, download the free rule set, admire the art, and pledge your support today. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.